Hello, I'm John Weiss. Welcome again to Table 17. This is for our Wednesday night class on January the 10th, 2024. We are continuing our pursuit to understand the ultimate kingdom of God. And we are in the chapter on vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We're in the second half of that chapter. And we're gonna try we're gonna take this on in three segments or so. Each one should take us ten or twelve, something like that, minutes apiece. And so we're gonna get that in three three sessions so you can start and stop that in brief times if you like over about a ten or twelve minute segment. Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that you are able to change our lives as we learn more about you. Lord, we know that your spirit and Lord God, we come to you just in honest form, just as we are, Lord. We don't overdo it. We don't try to oversell it. We're just us. And oh Lord, I ask you that you would use my voice, Lord, according to your will and speak your word, Lord. And God, let all of us hear your word in our hearts that we're able to God receive and our lives be changed by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the first brothers in the Old Testament, Cain, said the very same thing after he slew his brother Abel. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Genesis 4.13. In this episode of John's vision, he saw the fifth angel, the first woe, and the star falling from heaven to the earth. We again understand the timelessness of John's vision. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, verses 18 and 19. Jesus himself saw Satan falling from heaven, so we know that this is not an event that will take place in the future. Satan has already opened the pit of hell and released the demon force that we, as children of God, war every day of our lives. The locust described in Revelation represents the demons of hell, the third part of heaven that fell with Lucifer. The demon force may attack and torment the church and the people of God, but they no longer hold any authority over them, over us. We will know when the kingdom of God is at hand because the only way given in the scriptures is when we see devils being cast out. Jesus said, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you, Matthew 12, 28. When we understand that we have authority over these spirits loosed from hell itself, we know that God has given us dominion to be victorious. We begin to stand as the people of God, the people God has called us to be. Satan's name, Abaddon in Hebrew, Apollyon in Greek is translated destroyer, or accuser. He and he already has been cast to earth and controls the principalities and powers of the air. John, in his panoramic vision of eternity, saw Satan fall as he saw all the bitterness Satan and his demons brought to the philosophies, and they call that waters, of mankind. He saw these demons in the form of locusts attacking men. And John said of them, They have teeth like lions, and their roar is loud. But those who have the seal of God in their foreheads shouldn't become disturbed, because they recognize the attacker for who he is. We, the children of God, know that Satan has a big roar, but he has no teeth! Exclamation mark. We are told in 1 Peter 5 8 to be watchful, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Yes, the sound of the demons arrayed for battle is loud, but did you ever stop to think that for every demon 
two angels stand by to help you? Question mark. They should give us courage for daily battles against Satan and his demons. Exclamation mark. We ought to say, praise God, we already won, have won the victory. Exclamation mark. We're already in the kingdom of God and we know how to overcome the devil. Exclamation mark. Satan does roar like a lion. And he was roaring especially loudly one day when Elisha's servant ran to him and said, Alas, my master, exclamation mark, how shall we do, exclamation mark, for he had seen the horses and chariots of the enemy circling the city. Elisha, he said, they're going to kill us, exclamation mark, they're going to destroy us, exclamation mark, we're going to lose, exclamation mark. Listen to all that noise, exclamation mark. Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about. Elisha, 2 Kings 6, 1, 1 and 7. They're all around us too. In our every day, they're with us. Indeed, as Elisha told his servant, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 2 Kings 6, 16. That is what the church, the 144,000, should be saying, exclamation mark, yes, Satan and his demons are strong, and they have been loosed out of the belly of hell itself, but God is greater, exclamation mark. In verse 11, the angel of the bottomless pit is Satan, who is called, also called Abaddon in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek. The fact that he is referred to as king indicates that the demon kingdom is a well-organized entity with authority and rank and the capability of attacking the world on command, the authority to send demons to reside to send demons resides in Satan. And whenever there is an open door, he sends his emissaries to attack believers. <clears throat> Since he is an intelligent being, Satan knows exactly where weak points exist, and he takes advantage of them to mount attacks against individuals families, or churches. It is important to remember that when we war the kingdom of Satan, we war against a kingdom that is well organized and operated by beings of great intelligence. For that reason, we must have spiritual discernment when we deal in areas where Satan and his demons are operating. The first woe has, been, has now passed, and there are two woes yet to follow. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the numbers of the armies of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousands, two hundred thousand thousand. And I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horse in the, the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and of brimstone, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. For these three were the third part of men killed, for by these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not. Of the works of their hands, that they should not worship 
devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Revelation 9, 13 through 21. Up to this point, every trumpet that sounded had been trying to convince people to repent of their evil deeds, God warned. See yourselves where you are. Look at your problems. But as we see in this passage, they did not repent. The people to whom John wrote understood the significance of the Euphrates River. They knew that on the other side of the Euphrates stood Assyria and Babylon. And when Israel was attacked, the forces also came from beyond the Euphrates. John was trying to show that the time would come when the armies would grow so great that the Euphrates could no longer hold them back. In other words, the forces of evil would be so great that there would no longer be any control over them. The army of two million, verses 16, does not refer to an army from a specific nation, as many have tried to label, label it, but it simply refers to the overwhelming evil that has been loosed upon the world. To the persecuted Christians, John is saying, when the Euphrates dries up and the enemy force marches in, do not be upset. That will be the time for you to lift up your heads and say, it will not be long before God's answer, God answers our prayers for vengeance upon those who persecuted us. But despite the warnings, the sinful men who had not been killed by the plagues did not repent of or stop their evil acts. They still loved their bank account accounts more than they loved God, and they could not bring themselves to give up their material goods and satisfaction of their fleshly desires. They would not repent. I'm going to stop there. <laughs>